So today I'd like to announce the release of my Affinity Masterclass, going over all of the tools and features in the new Affinity V3 app. I know I said it was going to take until the end of the year, but luckily I had some free time this past week, so I was able to put in some 12-hour days and get these lessons created and uploaded. If you're already enrolled in my Affinity Designer Masterclass, or my complete bundle of courses, then you should already have access to this new course free of charge. Just sign into your account and you'll be good to go. For this video, I'm going to share a sample lesson where we do an overview of the software's layout so you can familiarize yourself with it. If you want to check out the complete course, I'll have a link to it in the description of the video, and if you subscribe to my mailing list, you can get a coupon code for 20% off all courses and bundles. Just figured I'd throw that out there. Enjoy the lesson, and if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. Okay, so now that we have a new document open, let's do a layout overview of the application so that you have an understanding of what you're looking at as we navigate around throughout this course. Now, the first thing to notice up top here are the four different environments that we can work in in Affinity. We have Vector, Pixel, Layout, and Canva AI. So if you come over here to Pixel, this should be the default when you launch the application. This is for when you're working with any kind of pixel-based imagery, such as photographs. When you're in this environment, you will notice you have pixel-based tools over here. So for example, if you wanted to use brushing or if you wanted to remove a background from an image or crop an image, you have all of those related tools over here. If you come over here to Vector, you'll notice we have vector-based tools. Vector graphics are graphics that are made from individual coordinate points that are placed on an X and Y axis and have a path running through them, as opposed to being constructed out of pixels. They're meant for designing icons, logos, simple illustrations, and stuff like that. So if you come over here to Layout, we have layout-based tools. This is for if you're doing any kind of desktop publishing. For example, if you're designing a report and you need all of the text and data laid out in nice, neat columns and data tables, you can do all of that using the tools in this environment. And then finally over here, we have Canva AI. This is if you wanna use any of Affinity's AI-based tools. And this is limited to those of you who are subscribed to Canva Pro. So Affinity is a free app. The only thing that isn't free is this environment over here. You have to subscribe to Canva Pro to use these tools. And we will have separate sections for each of these environments as we go through the course. And I will have a course section for this environment as well for those of you who are subscribed. If not, you can just disregard that section of the course. So let me go back in there into the vector mode. We're gonna start here because this is the first one. At the top of the screen here to the right, you'll notice some basic system functions. For example, Boolean operations, which allow you to create shapes based on the intersecting area of other shapes. We have, the, we have basic transformation options such as flip, rotate. We have the alignment menu, and then we have the snapping menu. And then we have the export menu. You can quickly export something using this menu right here. We'll be going over each of these things individually as we progress through the course. The point of this video is just to, just to give you an overview of what this is and where it's all located. Underneath this top bar, you'll notice the tool settings menu. This menu will change based on which tool you have selected. So right now I have the select tool enabled and because of that we have select tool based settings in there. If I were to choose the artboards tool, now we have artboards settings. And you'll notice as we choose different tools, you'll notice the settings change. And as we progress through the course, you'll be learning how all of these tools work and what all of the settings are within them. And then over here on the left hand side, obviously we have the different tools for the environment you're working in. And if you come down here to this little button with the three dots and click on that, it's an overview, it's an overall menu of all of the tools located within the software. So if you accidentally remove one of these tools from your menu and you want to put it back, you can just come and find it in this menu and re-enable it through here. Now, one thing I wanted to point out, some of these tools, you'll notice that there is an arrow pointing down and to the right. All that means is that the tool has multiple tools associated with it. So for example, the node tool also has the point transform tool associated with it. So there's two Two different tools here located within this one tool submenu. And the same thing over here, the pencil tool has the same thing. We have variations of the pencil tool. Same thing with the shapes tool. We have all the different shapes you can choose from. You can just click on the tool and you'll see a floating menu with the sub tools, or you can just hold a click over it and it'll show you all of the different sub tools within it. And then finally down here, we have 
uh, a shortcut for the fill and stroke properties of an object. So if you wanted to apply a fill color to an object, you could use this menu right here. And if you wanted to apply a stroke color, you can use that option right there. This is just a shortcut to the color menu. There will be a dedicated lesson for this shortly. I just wanted to show you where this is. This is just a, this is just a shortcut basically. And then down here at the bottom of the screen, we have some status indicators. So down here, you can see we're working on page one of one. This is only a one page document. So that's why it says one of one. If this were a multi-page document and I were on page two or three, for example, it would show you two of three or three of three and so on and so forth. And then down here, it shows you a little indicator with some, uh, with some tips telling you what you can do with your objects. So for example, if I were to draw an object, It'll show you that I have a rectangle created. It'll give you these different tips, all the different things you can do with the rectangle. And if I were to create another rectangle and a third one and grab my select tool, I could select all of those rectangles and you will see, it'll show you down here, I have three objects selected. And that could actually come in handy at times because there are times when I'm working with a lot of different objects and I have them all selected. It's good to know how many exactly I have selected. I could look down there and verify. So I'm going to select these objects and press the delete key to get rid of them. And then over here on the right hand side of the screen, we have all of our different dockable menus or our studio menus. And these also change based on the environment that you're working in. Now, some of them stay the same regardless. For example, the layers menu, this is uh, one of those fundamental tools within Affinity that, you're, that you will always use regardless of the environment. So you'll always see your layers menu there. But you'll notice these other menus in here as well. We have swatches, stroke, appearance, and these all do different things. There will be lessons for each of these as we, as we move forward through the course. If you ever lose these menus at some point, because it is possible to pop them out and make them floating menus and then close out of them and then they're gone. If you ever do that, you can just replace them by coming up here to, you go to window, panels, or come down here to vector. There we go. We have the different vector tools in here. So path brushes, quick effects, stroke, styles, appearance. These are all visible on the screen to the right. Constraints and isometric, these aren't visible. So if you wanted to use those tools, you would have to enable that there. And the same thing over here with pixels. When you're in the pixel environment, we have our different pixel-based tools, table-based tools, text-based tools, so on and so forth. The Affinity Masterclass is a collection of over 80 video lessons where we go over all of the tools and features in the software to learn what they are, how they work, and how you can apply them to your own workflow. By the end of this course, you will have everything you need to become a master of the Affinity Design application. You'll learn about designing logos, formatting documents for print, advanced layer adjustments and brushing techniques, and you'll even learn about some of the more advanced features such as data merging and multi-page documents with repeating design elements. Each video lesson has a comment section where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you need it. And you'll also get access to our private community where you can share your work and get feedback from others. Scroll down a little further to learn more about the Affinity Masterclass, and I'll see you inside.